Hi guys, it's Miss PMS Ring. We are going to start by talking about a lady named Clara Barton. Um, remember last lesson we talked about Robert E. Lee and the Confederate Army. So today we're going to talk about Clara Barton, who was nicknamed the Angel of the Battlefield. So while you're listening to us tell you this story, think about why you think she was named the Angel of the Battlefield and think about why she could have been helpful during the Civil War. So Miss Ring is going to go ahead and start us off. By some measures, more American soldiers died during the Civil War than in all other American wars combined. At the end of the Civil War, over 600,000 Union and Confederate soldiers were dead. Compare that to 25,000 killed in the Revolutionary War, fought from 1775 to 1783, in which George Washington and his army won America's independence. 25,000 dead is no small number, but it is puny, or really small, compared to 600,000. In addition to those killed, well over a million men were wounded in the Civil War. More soldiers were killed and wounded in the Civil War compared to the Revolutionary War because the weapons were more advanced. The care for the soldiers was also really, really bad. So listen carefully to hear who's gonna help improve the care that was given to the injured soldiers. Americans were no strangers to the horrors and death brought on by war but the Civil War proved to be far bloodier than any war before it. The Battle of Antietam, fought in Maryland, provides a strong example of how the Civil War was a war like no other. On September 17, 1862, there were more than 21,000 casualties in a single day, including nearly 4,000 killed on both sides. That means that about one out of every six soldiers who took the field that day at, Anti at Antietam were either killed or wounded within just a few hours. Despite all its horrors, war can sometimes bring out the best in people, for there are those who fight to save lives as well. Clara Barton was one such person who, who wished only to lessen the suffering and pain. She was a school teacher from Massachusetts and had always been known as a loving, compassionate person, meaning that she cared for other people and she wanted to make their lives better. What does compassionate mean? Does it mean that she didn't care for people and she didn't want to make their lives better or that she did care for people and she wanted to make their lives better? Clara Barton had no formal schooling as a medical nurse, yet by the war's end, she would become one of the most famous nurses in history. Clara Barton was Washington DC was in Washington DC after the first battle of Manassas where hundreds of wounded Union soldiers returned after losing a battle that everyone thought they would win easily. The hospitals in the city were quickly overcrowded. There were not enough beds or medical supplies to take care of all of the wounded or people who were hurt. So Clara Barton immediately went around the city knocking on doors and collecting bandages and medicine from people's homes. Clara Barton helped to care for and save hundreds of wounded soldiers after that first battle of Manassas. During this time, she recognized the bigger problem. While all the generals and politicians were busy figuring out how to build their armies and win battles, nobody had given serious thought to taking care of the thousands of men who would undoubtedly be wounded. Do you think that was very fair to the soldiers? Why don't you think the generals were thinking about that when they were planning all these things? What do you think was more important to them? So because of this, Clara Barton decided she would do something about it herself. She began by writing letters and visiting doctors, politicians, and other leaders, encouraging them to invest more money in medical supplies for the soldiers. She visited women's groups, churches, and hospitals. She called on wealthy individuals to donate or give medical supplies and money to help the wounded. Soon, Clara Barton had collected a large assortment of supplies, but she didn't stop there because the supplies would not do anyone any good unless they were delivered to the battlefield. What do you think Clara Barton's gonna do to get those supplies to the battlefield? Those who were wounded in battle experienced terrible suffering. Look at this picture, what does wounded mean? So there are people laying on the ground. Do you think wounded means that they're healthy and doing well? or maybe that they're hurt and sick if they were experiencing terrible suffering. They were often left lying on the field for an entire day or even longer because everyone was too busy fighting to come and carry them away. 
Field hospitals were where the wounded were taken during and after battles were sometimes set up in nearby barns or houses or simply in a group of tattered tents. Soldiers in overcrowded field hos hospitals often found themselves left alone, bleeding, lying on the ground with nobody to bring them food or water or to comfort them and ease their pain. The doctors were simply too busy and too tired to help everyone. Thousands of men died who could have lived if only the hospitals had had all the supplies they needed. Knowing this, toward the end of 1861, Clara Barton started following the main Union Army wherever it went. This army was in charge of protecting Washington, D.C., though its ultimate goal was to attack Richmond, the Confederate capital, and win the war. Do you guys know what state Richmond is in? It's in Virginia. Do you remember who was from Virginia? Good job. It was Robert E. Lee. I know you guys knew that. <laughs> Wherever the Union Army fought, Clara Barton followed with her wagon loads with her wagon loads of bandages and other supplies, making sure the doctors had what they needed. Whenever possible, she made food for the sick and wounded, brought them water, comforted them, made sure they had blankets, wiped sweat from their foreheads, fixed their, fixed their bandages, and simply just talked to them. Still, Clara Barton was determined to do more. So many wounded soldiers lay suffering on the battlefield for hours, sometimes even days, waiting for someone to come and help. Clara Barton wanted to be able to go to these soldiers on the battlefield where they needed her the most. Unfortunately, women weren't allowed on the battlefields. At least, that's what the generals told her whenever she asked permission to come help during the battles. Why do you guys think women might not have been allowed on the battlefields? But Clara Barton kept asking and listening and insisting that she would be able to save lives. Finally, in 1862, she received permission to go to the heart of the battles themselves. Clara Barton became known as the angel of the battlefield to soldiers and doctors who were always glad to hear, to see her calm face amid the horrors of war. She was there at Antium where more than where more than 12,000 Union soldiers were wounded, far more than she and all the other nurses and doctors could care for, but they did their best. Once a battle was over, she would hurry back to Washington, D.C. to collect more supplies and then catch up with the Army again. By the middle of 1863, the Union Army figured out how to make sure the field hospitals had enough supplies. This was partly thanks to the fact that Clara Barton kept pressure on the War Department and other officials in Washington, D.C. to make real changes. She no longer had to collect supplies, but she continued to follow the Army for the remainder of the war, acting as the angel of the battlefield to countless, more than could be counted, wounded soldiers. Clara Barton saw more bloodshed and fighting than most soldiers during the war. She was there at some of the worst battles. She worked as bullets and cannonballs whisted whistled overhead and crashed all around. Once, a bullet tore right through her shirt sleeve, but she was very brave and did not let fear stop her from doing what she needed to do. How do you think Clara felt during this time? Do you think she was calm? Do you think she was worried, scared? Do you think she was happy? When the war ended, Clara Barton continued to find ways to help others. In fact, she was only just beginning. She went to Europe and worked as a nurse in wars over there. During the course of her life, she went to work in Turkey, China, Cuba, and other places. She returned to America and in 1881 founded um, or started the American Red Cross to provide medical supplies, food, and other aid during natural disasters such as floods and earthquakes. Today, the American Red Cross is still run by volunteers, people who donate their time for free in order to help other people in need. Clara Barton helped countless people during her lifetime. And although there are still wars and other disasters in the world, Clara Barton would be glad to know that the American Red Cross continues to save lives and give comfort to people in need to this very day. All right, guys, so think back to the prediction that you made at the very beginning um, about why you think Clara Barton was named the Angel of the Battlefield and um, what good she could have done during the Civil War and see if your answer was right. If you can't remember what you predicted, 
try to think about the words that we read to you and see if you can figure it out from that. Um, next week, we are going to talk about something a little different. So we are so excited to see you guys again. Bye, guys. Bye.